Give some time and of course the firepower for Wise. And now, best of one. I think this was a good call for uh, Blacklist. I gotta say, yeah, yeah. they wanted to go fast, but I'm still giving Red Cannons a little bit of room because they have so much vision and they're so mobile. Yeah. yeah, this is where you also go. I oh, mean, Blacklist International just went Blacklist International. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very Blacklist International. The draft, you're looking at the lineup. Matilda, oh my Venus played that so many times. Barrett's on Wise, it's a specialty. You have Lapu Lapu on uh, Edward, one of his favorite heroes up, and up to date. Harith, of course, for Oheb. Won a lot of games and won a championship with it. And Akagura for Haji, as we saw one of the best mid lane heroes that he was able to get is this Kagura. So this is uh, so much comfort for the side of Blacklist International. Absolutely, but guess what? It's time, ladies and gentlemen, for the first match of the M3 World Championships. We're getting into the land of dawn, where again, Blacklist International, with their composition, will have early prio. It's going to be very hard for the side of Red Cannons to get anything done here in the early stages with literally four scaling heroes. I don't know, man. I feel like you're giving Blacklist a little bit too much room. We'll see how that fares for Red Cannons. Right now, Jumpstyle just going to use a Retribution, securing that orange buff in the early game. Again, not much they can do here to go for the Little Wanderer. Interesting how Blacklist International going for the invade, going for the check, while Luna was going for the leash across the map. They were expecting a vertical jungle. They were expecting some level of invade, but they kept it safe anyways. Real quick, let's pause this up. Make sure that everything behind the scenes is on point. And I gotta say, we're off to a safe start. These two teams, they know each other. I, uh, I'm aware of scrims happening all throughout the quarantine. I know that they know each other on a more than just face level. On a, on a surface value, these two teams have studied each other very well. Yeah. And they're showing so much respect. Yeah, I, I want to say it's a different play style, at least in the early stages. The laning configuration is definitely different from both teams. For the side of Blacklist International, it's a standard 1-3-1. One, one, we're in your two supports. Your position 4 and 5 will um, protect the jungler. Clear out the mid lane as fast as they can and then protect the jungler. Move up from that. And then, looking at Red Cannons, they really want to funnel their strategy into the gold lane this time as the Rafaela will be escorting this 1-1 one, one for maybe the entirety of the laning stage just to make sure that the 1-1 one, one will get the farm. And I think that's a great approach. The Yisen Chin can fend off from himself. The only problem here is that what if they run out of time um, for this 1-1 one, one to have enough farm? I'm scared of Upa Tizi, honestly. Mm -hmm. Upa here has a great game, especially if... And he's got a Tizi. Yes. And he's got a Tizi. <laughs> if, if he does get the babysitting that Luna's willing to provide. Yeah. I, I saw the interaction and I saw the rotation. Yeah. Luna was on his way to Upa. Yeah. And Harith, Oheb, we've seen him come through worse. We've seen the young man, the young gold laner from Blacklist, survive so much pressure. Yeah. But against a 1-1 one -one that has a Rafaela on him, I, I foresee diving shenanigans. Yeah, I, I honestly cannot remember what Ohe picked up as the battle spell, but if it's a purified, then it means that it will be a free game for him. If you're looking at the yeah. composition of Blacklist, uh, sorry, of, of Red Can, it's, it's not much lockdown in there. I in agree. fact, there's only like the Rafaela and maybe the stun of the, um, of the Farsa, but that's hard to land. So technically speaking, this will be a great game for Oheb, especially after being picked up third. Imagine this, third pick for Blacklist International. There's not an answer for any kind of hard CC on that parrot. And I'm scared for Red Cannons because of that yeah. fact. I agree on that completely, but I do want to touch on the fact that Red Cannons, they picked up the 1-1 one -one over the Clint, right? Clint, again, being a very good, very uh, dominant laning hero here in the early stages of the game. I thought for sure that they want to go for that. Clint, get that lane dominance, lane kingdom up in the gold lane. Get Just shut Oheb down from the get-go, but they went for the 1-1 one instead. So, so right now, I'm still pretty confused as to why they did that. Maybe do you guys know, do you guys yeah. have a expla an explanation for that? I see 1-1 one -one a lot in MPL Brazil. Mm -hmm. Just taking okay. a look back at uh, the regular season, their playoffs, even uh, well into uh, Liga Latam right before we got into M3 uh, the 1-1 one -one shows up very very often and it's either that or the side lane uh, mages like uh, like Lunox which is often banned as you saw earlier here right yep. so now back into the game you can see that yes Luna is going to be babysitting Upa TZ yeah. but just the same Oheb he is, he's, he's not having a good time only because only because Blacklist 
about to just rotate. Check this out. Yeah, there you go. Haji goes in. Unfortunately, unable to do anything here. Blacklist will just go ahead and try to take that gold buff right now. Will be able to secure it as Jump Style doesn't have the retribution just yet. Blacklist International so far right now with a 10 gold lead. Just a very, very small gold lead, but a turtle cam right there presented to you by TikTok Live as we are perhaps going to go into another pause for now here, Leo. Love the uh, huge swing. That visit uh, by Luna was timed well by Blacks International, so they were able to bother the Rafaela and the one one up top, open up this first turtle at about two minutes, as you can see right on the pause. Um, between the Uranus and the Lapu Lapu, that's why Lapu Lapu is so strong in this metagame, in any metagame, is because in the XP lane, he's, he's nigh unbeatable. Bravest fighter at minute two, it's disgusting. It is. It really is disgusting. But unfortunately, we do have another technical pause here from the side of Blacklist International. We can see a little bit of frustration actually from Luna right there. Maybe getting, you know, the emotion, the mental game is huge here, even in the best of ones. So we'll see, we'll see what happens here. But so far, Blacklist are the ones to initiate another technical pause. This does give us a little bit more time to, you know, speak on the drafts here, right? Uh, again, they have a very hard front to back composition. They literally want to just play hiding back with the Wan Wan, with the Farsa, with the Yi Sin Shin as well, and the frontline Uranus. But the thing is, Blacklist International with their composition, they will be able to control the tempo of the game from the start to the mid game, I suppose, until that's where Red Cannons can try to come back. You know, that's where they start to get their own tempo, get their own power spikes. But what are, you, what are your thoughts on this? Because it's the complete opposite of what we just uh, touched on earlier on. We said that Blacklist are the ones to take the games to long distances, whereas Red Cannons, they like to go in for the early game plays. Yeah, no, that's exactly what's going to happen here. Eason Shin. He scales uh, not as good as a Nathan, not as good as many other hybrid uh, cores in this game currently, in the metagame. But just the same, they have a, uh, a Farsa. They have a 1-1. One -one. And it sounds like I'm about to say something good about Red Canid, but actually, all of these heroes are great targets for uh, the Circling Eagle. Great targets for yeah. the uh, Detna's Welcome. And Four out of five. It, it's only really Akashi who should not be hit by the bravest fighter. But almost anyone can be won off of a duel yeah. by Edward on the Lapu Lapu. Yeah, there's a chain stun coming up from Blacklist International. We can see, like you said, the Circling Eagle did us welcome. Good single target uh, lockdown for sure. And then you have uh, uh, Lapu Lapu, good initiation. Especially good backline um, gap closer to the Lapu Lapu. And then the Kagorov obviously is your AOE. If you're looking at Red Cannons, it's not about just the lockdown. In fact, they only have the Rafaela as their hard stun here. And it's not gonna be good. However, they have so much damage in the party. Imagine Yi Sin Chin as well as the Farsa. This is good coverage. Almost uh, global presence in there. High reach as well. Big amount of damage from long distance. It means that if they do catch Blacklist International off guard, it will be a uh, treat for them. That it's might be one thing. Apart. That might be one thing that Red Canids has over Blacklist, the range. I can see certain situations wherein Blacklist is chasing. And because of that holy healing, Red Canids just gets away with a lot. I guess that's why I remember now seeing some MPL Brazil matches wherein the scoreline would be something like 2-3 and three in 15 minutes. Oh. Well, it's because they, they, they play so safe, Red Canids yeah. specifically. So I guess that's why they get into their rivals' heads. Vivo um, K-Star so much. That's why they keep winning those uh, big grand finals because they understand, they know the, the, the cat and mouse game. They understand the dynamic. Yeah, they're playing to, they're basically playing to wait for the mistakes to come from their enemy, from their opponents here. But yes, we're still in a technical pause right now. I do want to remember everyone back at home who are watching, please do be patient with us, obviously, here at MDM3 World Championships, fair play is the number one priority. So if there are any connection issues or maybe just any issues whatsoever, we want to get that through first. That's why the pause is here. So please do be patient with us, everyone who is watching. We are just as excited as you to get into the games as well. Yep, uh, hopefully this is uh, the first of the last uh, that we go last, through. Yeah. yeah, because this is again just a best of one, ladies and gentlemen. A best of one, meaning this lineup here, the 5v5 uh, between the very mobile, very fast, very kiting lineup by Red Canid going up against, uh, as Mirko put it, front to back, just all in strat by Blacklist. It's, it's gonna matter. This is one point closer towards an upper bracket slot in the playoffs. 
I, I believe after the pause, we just uh, saw a turtle take. I mean, we missed a turtle take. Yeah, we did miss a turtle take. Not sure who got it right now. I think it is the, uh, from the side of Blacklist International right now. You know, based on the compositions, they should be able to get that. Yep. Right? yep, it is going to be Wise who picked up that turtle. <laughs> so we are back in the game. A little sliver of that turtle buff aura. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. We caught that a little bit right here, but again, both teams just playing it really, really safe right now. Blacklist International with their early game composition. They don't really go, want to go for crazy fights on the board, but wait a minute. Zaman Force has been popped. It's going to be Lupa Tizi instantly just taken away, and that's going to be the Razor First Blood. Super sharp coming oh, in. Luna could only watch. There's only so much you could do as a Rafaela in that moment. Like, holy healing. Yeah, I'll heal you, what, an eighth of your health? and he couldn't get away. And this is what Wolf was talking about earlier. The firepower and the lockdown from Blacklist International just miles ahead. Oheb gonna catch here a little bit of Luna's ult. Jump style to the rescue, could not lock on Oheb. Yeah, but wait a minute though. Blacklist International trying to rotate already to the top side. They're gonna go and choose Opt to go for this gold buff instead. Again, Red Cannons, they're playing it super safe like we mentioned earlier. Maybe a little bit of an overposition from the side of Upa TZ just now, but just immaculate and just beautiful, beautiful rotation from the side of Blacklist International catching their opponents off guard. Again, now rotating to the mid lane and waiting, setting up for that second turtle of the game. Interesting how the turtle just uh, came back to its original spot. Mm -hmm. So as random as this is, it's great. Oh! Yeah. Circling Eagle! Circling Eagle already onto Upa TZ. Seems like a little bit of a miscommunication right there as Blacklist International. They didn't really want to go for that. Venus went in, tried to go for a little bit more damage as they set up towards the turtle. Wise already hitting on that. And Frost needs to be careful here. We'll just try to, you know, withstand the wave, try to handle and keep the wave at bay. Mount Shocker just in time to see Blacklist take it. Turtle Slain brought to you by the STB. Now, Red Cane is putting a little bit more pressure up top. Yeah, there you go. It's going to be the Oheb coming in for the Zaman Force. But look at that. The crossbow tank has been popped. Oheb caught very, very low right now. But he's going to be taken very low as well. Yin Yang overturned. And the Circling Eagle will be slain. able to be get the kill back onto Upa TZ. 0 to 0 right now in the fifth minute of the game. I keep talking about uh, the whole. Red Canids just kiting Blackness International, but it seems like it's a switch of roles here because it's Canids who keep walking into Blacklist. Now another fight in mid, not gonna happen, not gonna blow up just like that because it's the wrong configuration of heroes. There's no lockdown. Uh, Luna is not here. Luna's not here to stun Blacklist and Wow, look at how much work Blacklist put into this mid lane turret already. Yeah, look at that. Holy Baptism does, is able to connect onto Edward. Unfortunately, there is a guiding wind to get him out of that one. Red Cannons already now a thousand gold behind a Blacklist International just from the pickoffs and the turret gold alone. Again, like you mentioned, that mid turret has been taken down a qu quite a bit and they have already started to rotate here to the top side with them trying to go for a pickoff. Maybe Zaman Force has been popped. Venus not in the position to go for the Circling Eagle, but that's what they want. Wanted just the turret, and they are playing this really, really smart, really, really intelligently as they will make their way to the mid lane once again. Haji opening Blue up the map for us. Wise and Haji taking down the second turret of the game. So clean, Blacklist International eating good here. Wise goes ahead, steals that orange. That's his welcome now going in. It's in a 1v4. Crossbow Tang has been popped, but Wise in a 1v4 is able to win. What is going on, man? The backup coming in from Edward as Luna will be able to finally pick up Wise. It is a three for one trade for the side of the Filipinos. One, because Luna's passive just took Wise out yep. on the Blue way, despite the destroyed. guiding winds getting him back. But you're right, like, the first two minutes was relatively close, but Blacklist knew exactly what they needed to do. They isolated the XP lane. They foresaw the pressure that was going to be put on Oheb because of how early it is. And Wolf, here's the answer to your question earlier. It's a flicker. Yeah. It's not a purify yet. Yet, Oheb is still dominating. Oheb yeah. is still winning. And I think it's also because he knows that his, he had backup. Yeah. As we can see from the instant replay, Jumpstyle already committing his dash. And he can't even like confidently hit onto Wise because he's looking for Edward. Edward snuck in at the right moment. Just the moment he saw that Yishin Shin, he popped his combo and Yishin Shin is gone. Especially because the, the dash is already used.
Yeah, this is basically Blacklist International in a nutshell. They suffocate their opponents, right? They use the little bit of pressure everywhere on the map to just slowly but surely take you out of the game. And right now, that's exactly what they're doing. Just clean, crisp gameplay, playing all the side lanes properly. Wave control is just amazing from this team. But look at that, in the top side, they are already going for the engage. Yin Yang overturn, connecting onto Upa TZ, still able to get away with that Aegis. But the pressure is up for the side of Blacklist International. They will be able to pick up the third turn. Turtle and that orange buff as well. 100% turtle take rate. Jump style is hungry. Jump style, lucky to get his purple because again, back to back to back, turtle has spawned here on the lower quarter of the map. And right now, top lane, Oheb is just. Look at this. Oheb versus Luna couldn't even protect the turret. This is this is Frost just doing damage control. He knows something's up. He knows they're in trouble. Because they they can't see Edward. Oh, Edward isn't even destroyed. part of this fight. There's one happening down bottom. Yeah, they're getting they're playing the side waves really, really well, but wait a minute, it's gonna be Oheb jumping in with his Amon Force, jumping all the way, has the flicker ready, but it's gonna be jump style instead, taken down. Luna forced to back away, and again, Blacklist suffocating their opponents, playing it so, so well, getting the one for one, one for zero picks all across the map, all from that wave control, man. That wave manipulation is now, but the airstrike will be used to try to clear the wave as Akashi goes back in. Venus, caught in the bad situation, needs to be careful here, because that is a four-man gank. Oh my, Venus going for the circling eagle on Able to Team get away, and that's gonna be one Hero picked up by Upatizi. Not sure if it's worth it, but obviously, Oh My Venus played it to isolate mid to get that push close to taking it down, opening it up for Wise down bottom despite the man to man defense by Akashi. So, overall, a life for a turret this early on, nine minutes in the game, I'd say it's worth it. But there's something with this map, there's something with this best of one because Lord is also going to be on the lower quarter. So I guess that's why they tried to open up these two side lanes to get just as fast a major objective as possible. Akashi just pushing back the rest of Blacklist International. Why is more than happy to welcome him. And Orange once yep. more oh denied! Because Wise is level 13 and Jumpstyle is just a level 11. So the retribution for Wise is definitely much stronger. And you saw how Red Cannons really just crumbled to that pressure. I mean, Jumpstyle even called his supports for that orange buff, but they weren't able to make it. So, so much real estate that they're losing at now for Red Cannons. And I would say this is not the way you play Uranus, because the way that you play Uranus is always far forward against your team split pushing, maybe getting two lanes, the scutting the creeper, you know, the Kenji play that he was trying to do. I mean, I, I think only the Filipinos thought about the Kenji play, but basically it's <laughs> Uranus that cuts two lanes of minions in the opponent's base. We saw the Kenji play at M2. Uh, that's it right. was in the last that World Championship, there. so it's basically just a deep cut. Yeah. It's a deep cut, but I think it's too late right now. Not the perfect timing. Look at this, Red Canids putting their own Ube. This is the Brazilian Ube. Yeah, the Brazilian Ube right here is wise. Actually, now, will be able to be zoned away for a bit. But again, like we mentioned earlier, Blacklist, this is the way they play the game. They just suffocate their opponents, playing the waves perfectly, freezing it, and not letting Red Cannons get even a little bit of gold here. In the 10th minute of the game, it is already an 8,000 gold lead for the Filipino champions. This is gonna be crazy. You know what you saw from Red Cannons? This is the second time that they tried to go for it, like a lot of players. The first time they did it was three heroes around the orange buff, and then they did five heroes around the uh, purple buff. Mm -hmm. You have to take note, buffs get stronger the more heroes around there is. And that meant that Twice can just bully them. They were grouped as five. Um, jump style will not be able to just like um, uh, normal attack the, main, the purple buff and then rely on retribution because unfortunately your normal attacks will deal less damage and your retribution will always not trump Wise because Wise is already level 15 and Jumps is level 12. So that's a checkmate by one hero against five of Red Cannons. Not to mention the tick Ooh. on Wise's passive on the, the knife on the Hunter uh, passive. Yeah. He just sticks faster. So Blast International, if they decide to take something away from Red Canids, it's, it's just almost easy pick. It's like taking candy from a, a baby. It's, it's, it's difficult. So Red Canids are trying their best here to recover. 
pulling their own version of the ube. All five in mid. Mount Shocker just to check where everyone is, and they see. Oh no, they see that Blacklist is going for the Luminous Lord. Man, they're so smart with this stuff, man. Look at that. They set up the slow push perfectly, timing it when the Enhanced Lord comes up, and there you go. There's just no response from Red Canis. They can't do anything at this point. If they do try to Red contest, they're surely going to be Lord. wiped out. And there you go. There you have it. Blacklist International with the Enhanced Lord and a 9,000 gold lead in the 12th minute of the first game here at the M3 World Championships. Two to six. I just got to say the kills that they got on Blacklist were one was a distraction kill. The other was just a deep dive by Wise. So, so far I can say Blacklist International hasn't committed any errors. This is a clean game for them. Yeah, de definitely. All the Blacklist International, they're very famous with their Matilda Airlines. You know, my Venus really danced that uh, Matilda. We were talking about how this will be like a duo or a trio in the mid lane, where the supports and the jungler will join out together and just ki get kills and make the plays on the map. Look at both the position 4 and 5 of Blacklist International. Both of them have 100% kill participation. Right? This is how you can say that your support duo is doing wonders. It's insane, honestly, right now with the Enhanced Lord marching that top side. Venus will try to zone them away from this, but he's got to be careful because Red Cannons, they have the abilities ready and up right now. But the airstrike being used, but Enhanced Lord will march into that inhibitor turret. There's nothing Red Cannons can do as of this moment. They're, be, they're gonna be able to take that inhibitor destroyed. turret and that tier 2 in the mid Blue lane out for nothing. Destroyed. There is nothing on the board for Red Cannons to do or even trade for. Top lane already penetrated. Bottom gonna follow through. It looks like Blacklist International is just going by this uh, in surgical precision. They know that Lord is coming up in about two minutes and change. So they're slowly taking bottom first. They're gonna chip down bottom to go harder. And now Oheb, he wants a head here. Yeah, look at that. Bravest Fighter being used to the backside as Oheb jumps back and forth. It is gonna be him zoned away, but the stun does connect the jump style, stops them in their tracks right now as Blacklist will just go, move on to the purple buff. Jump style will be zoned away. Luna gets taken down and that's gonna be another kill picked up from the side of Blacklist. Oheb picking up that purple buff and they're looking to end the game right here, right now. 14 minutes on the clock. Let's see what they can do. What Red Cannons can do here is basically find the one who's away from the Ube, but it's not gonna happen because of the Guiding Winds, and they're still going! There's another fight! There's another fight indeed! Haji goes in, picks up the kill, jumps out, just does no damage at this point, and Blacklist, again, surgical, clinical game right now. They are not dropping anyone. They're playing it so, so cleanly, and you can see they are getting one turret, backing away, getting another one, playing their waves, playing their objectives, doesn't want to leave anything, doesn't want to risk anything. That's just beautiful. Beautiful execution from Blacklist International, especially how they did it. This was a textbook play coming up from Blacklist International. Use your Lapu Lapu to peel the back lines, have someone, you know, separated from, each, uh, from the opponent's team and then peel it off. Then pick it, uh, pick it off. And that really happened with uh, Makashi. Knowing that he doesn't have Purify, Blacklist International went ahead and got the Uranus kill. And without the Uranus, there's really no one to face Blacklist International from Red Cannons. And I'm definitely sure that we're going to see it in the replay. You see how decisive they were on using this Lapu Lapu as their main peel against Blacklist Inter against Red Cannons. Yeah, Akashi had nothing to do here. Akashi has been having a difficult game. The 0-2-2 line is going to speak for itself. And yeah, he's the only one who can actually peel. Luna is not your traditional roamer. Luna is not a tank in this game. And a whole healing on a Uranus that was bullied for a majority of this game, maybe for 12, 13 minutes so far of the 16-minute bout. It, it's hard. So what's Akashi to do? I'm also curious because I'm sure he's getting the call here to say, okay, try to try to go find Oheb. Try to go find Venus. Take uh, take as much as you can from them and then distract them so that maybe Jump Style can go find the kill and open the map up for Frost. And that's a blessing in disguise, I think, because Frost hasn't died yet. So Absolutely. Frost is playing a good range game, but for how long can they do this? Because now Haji just picked up the Divine Glaive. He's gonna hurt all the more. Yeah, that's the thing, man. Uranus is a good frontline. If you let him scale, if you get and shut him down all the way from the early stages, he is very, very squishy, actually, you know. He has that regeneration from his ultimate, but still, he is very, very squishy here. And as you can see, Blacklist once again plays and go is going in for the team fight here. Strictly Eagle onto Luna. Not much going on right now as Red Cannon is still able to go away, Ooh. but Edward jumps in for the Bravest Fighter all the way oh. to the backside. Benetruncheon 
still there as Jumpstyle actually picks up a kill onto Haji. Upa Tizi now going in for the kite, going in for the crossbow of Tang, doesn't get it, and he's taken very low. It's gonna be Ohip picking up the kill. Akashi running for the hills right now as Blacklist and National are trying to go for it. That's his welcome beam pop. Not gonna be able to connect onto him, but it's gonna be Akashi running for the hills. It is the circling eagle to lock him down in place, and there's a Mon Force to finish him off. The killing spree now for the side of the Filipino gold laner. Gotta appreciate what Akashi was doing, and we were wondering what's Akashi to do. There's the answer. Just distract Blacklist International, but he can only do that for so long. There's only two defenders left on the side of Red Canons. There's no way Luna's gonna survive this. It's a two-man assault. Jumps out the only one left. No way, dude. Jumps out, jumps in. The winner's drunken is just there. Oh, hip gets away. Not for long, though. He's gonna get shut down, and that's gonna be Red Cannons still able to defend the game for now. But at what cost? They've lost everything at this point, and the Enhanced Lord is up for grabs for Blacklist International. Wolf, any thoughts Ooh. on that fight? That was Red Cannons surviving Mosquito Day Chief, but Blacklist International playing it so well. Fortunately for Edward, he missed his combo just because of the. We call it the ship, the skateboard for the Yisin Shin. It boosts up, boosts up his speed. That's why he was able to dodge the combo of the Lapu Lapu. But it won't matter as much. Yeah, they will survive for maybe a, a few minutes more. But Blacklist International will get the second lord of the game. This will jump through the composition, the, the, the base building of Red Cannons. And that's going to be deadly. Red Cannons needs to keep Frost safe for now so that they will have the weight here that they needed. Good shutdown from Frost. As they were able to look at this, look at how Jumpstyle was able to get out of there. Freestyling over Edward. And he actually stunned the right guy, which was Oheb. Mm -hmm. uh, followed up with this feathered airstrike. In all due fairness for Red Canids, that was a nice defense on their part. Yeah, right now, as we're looking at the game, honestly, if the later the game goes, the more it is going to favor Red Cannons. But are they going to be able to withstand the siege? Again, it is only their base left. Akashi getting caught, still able to dash away right now. It might be the final fight of the game here. Leo and Wolf, Feather Airstrike has not popped. Edward in the midst of it all, still able to take some damage as the Mon Force has not popped. Oh, him now jumping back and forth, trying to deal some damage. But actually, very good defense from the side of Red no Cannons, defense, still able to defend the Lord. Defense. But it is going to be Edward jumping with the Bravest Fighter, connecting onto the damage. The jump style will be caught very low, but Edward will lose his immortality. Crossbow Tang has been popping the base. is going to be the target of Blacklist International with the first win here at the M3 World Championships. One point ahead of the pack, this propels Blacklist to the top of Group A. And this is, again, just a best of one. Congratulations. Very well played. Got a little hairy towards the end there because we saw that Red Cannons were slowly ramping up their firepower, but if you're playing up against a team like Blacklist who's seen this situation hundreds, nay thousands of times maybe in all of their training, they knew that they needed to just go in and out, go in and out, time these passives. You can only winter trunch on so many Bravest Fighters. Yeah, that's right. We saw how clinical it was in the early stages. We saw how they were able to use their supporting duo, which is perfect. And we know, like, we, they know exactly what their win condition is. If 